Good morning, YouTube. Tyron Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. Happy Friday, by the way. I hope you guys are set to have a good weekend here because it's going to be a very busy one on this end. Multiple days of severe weather expected here after today. No severe storms forecast for today, but Saturday and beyond, different story. From the 6th to the 10th, we have at least some kind of severe weather risk here. Saturday has been kind of flip floppy as of late. We've been uh, going back and forth between the marginal and the slight risk. They recently, th as of this morning, put it back up to a slight risk. And this is mainly going to be a threat comprised of hail damaging winds. But there is a marginal tornado threat with this. More details on this threat in a little bit here. As far as the threat for day three, which would be Sunday, we do have an area of interest earlier in the day, I would say. But over here, this stretches all the way from uh, Peoria, Illinois, all the way over here towards Shreveport, Louisiana. Areas in between, of course, St. Louis, Springfield, Illinois. We also have Evansville, Kentucky, Louisville. We have Indianapolis in there as well. Bowling Green, Nashville, Jackson, Mississippi, Memphis. We also have Greenville, Mississippi as well. And the northern chunk of that Mississippi Delta there even could see a little bit of action main threat with this looks to be damaging winds as of right now hail threat by this point should diminish slightly we'll have to see if this ends up getting upgraded or not kind of lean, leaning towards it not due to a couple of uh parameters that we're lacking here we go through days four through eight and this is where things get kind of juicy it's a little bit of a glitch going on there with day four so if i go through days four through eight it doesn't really upgrade update properly but when I just go on the day four and isolate it, look what we have here. So Central Texas, this is on the eighth here. Definitely need to be on the watch for severe weather here. I think all hazards are possible, mainly kind of leaning a little bit more towards hail, but I do think tornadoes are also possible with this setup. So if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, Wichita Falls, Shreveport, Louisiana, Lufkin, Texas, Waco, Abilene, and also even in the capital, Austin, need to be on the lookout for severe weather then for day five this just barely moves off to the north and a little bit off to the east as well so we still have to report in that same area so we have to watch out for the threat of flooding down the line here <clears throat> but southern oklahoma you're now getting into the mix we're hanging out just outside oklahoma city and norman here at this point for the most part you should stay out of the slight risk but now we have alexandria louisiana in play as well so we have to look out for the threat of all hazards once again. I'm kind of thinking we could see a multicellular mode with this. Some of this is mentioned in the synopsis here. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to read that. And then, of course, on day six, we move off to the east just a little bit finally. Unfortunately, Shreveport is still in the slight risk area. So... Like I said, flood threat is definitely going to have to be something we watch really closely over here. Same with Alexandria, Lufkin, Texas as well. But now we're starting to introduce the Mississippi Delta, so that includes Greenville. We also have New Orleans and Baton Rouge in the mix. This is pretty much for the entire state of Louisiana now. We also have Jackson, Mississippi in play. Columbus, Mississippi. You're going to be right on the fringe of the slight risk if not in it. And then we also have Mobile, Alabama and parts of western Alabama as well in the mix. So looking at the models here, what we're going to be paying attention to the most are these troughs, of course. These troughs are usually a pretty good indication of significant weather heading our way. Whether it's something as small as rain, snow, really depends on the type of air mass that we have out ahead and associated with the trough itself. The thing to make note of with this system is, and this is the one for the sixth, is the fact that this trough is going to be negatively tilted. That's my alarm. Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, this trough is going to be negatively tilted. And the most significant thing about these negatively tilted troughs, they usually have a much better kinematic setup that's conducive to all hazards for severe weather. Usually will have a higher probability of storms firing at the very least with because of all the forcing that we will end up having available here. The real limiting factor, and we can uh, sneak this little uh, graphic of the low level jet in here in this corner is we do get a moisture return but it's going to be limited we're going to look at that moisture return in just a second here but with that those low level winds going off in that direction what you see indicated here 
we do end up having a setup where we do have somewhat favorable wind shear which is what you need for severe weather to produce all hazards i do think this threat will be mainly most prevalent around the early parts of the afternoon on saturday and the threat will diminish just slightly on sunday hence why we have that marginal risk we end up starting to see that uh, almost like a baseball swing kind of occurring with us here and that's a sign that we're about to see a trough ejection here because this is going to head out this new trough kicks in and it's going to be this one that i'm watching now that will introduce that severe weather threat for texas the eighth is a pretty notable threat and they may even push this slight risk maybe a little further to the north for that day on the 8th and then on the 9th we start to see central texas come into play start to see more of oklahoma coming into play and then on the 10th we see the same thing occurring in almost the exact same areas this does progress a little bit further off to the east a little bit quicker around the 10th so we'll start to see that severe weather threat diminish for areas around texas but i do think we could see some early morning severe storms there too for that particular day we see a linear mode begin to develop with this beyond that point and you can even see it on the euro which is also to the bottom left corner here and we'll watch this progress into south georgia and south carolina for the 11th and we may even see another round in the early hours maybe the early afternoon even of the 12th here towards south carolina heading off coast then after that we start to see another trough come in and this is pretty much going to be symbolic of what the weather pattern will be like over the back half of april here we see multiple troughs this trough in particular kind of catches my eye towards the 19th we'll have to see how this trends from that point onward but that's pretty much the end of the model run here once you get past 300 hours especially you're looking more for trends than anything else because we only have one model that our disposal here that really goes up to 300 hours and we're looking at it right here so nothing to really compare it to makes things kind of difficult you can kind of look at ensembles but looking at operational models and ensembles sometimes doesn't coincide well with one another especially for videos but that being said here looking at our temperatures and we'll also sneak in the dew points in the bottom left corner here main thing that you'll be looking for here are those moisture returns kind of coincide with these warm sectors here these warm sectors becoming more broad throughout the next few weeks here are going to be prevalent but here's the thing with the setup on the 6th we do get some decent surface temperatures here i do think there is potential for some cold core storms as well because right around where that low pressure is going to be and you can even see it i'm going to draw exactly where you would see that low pressure here that point of counterclockwise spin you can even see that warm air just kind of getting wrapped into it which is good for a severe setup but look at those surface temperatures that are right next to that that is a terrible arrow by the way oh my god but yeah look at the uh, surface temperature right here and i cannot draw it off i'm so off the mark of my drawing today but right here 57 degrees surface temperature idealistically you would want to have those surface temperatures more like what this is right here towards 70 degrees but with those cold core setups if you can get enough moisture you can get all hazards to be possible especially tornadoes where you're near that low pressure area but like i said it's not really looking incredible here because as you can see here kind of struggle with the moisture return on the sixth it's from that point beyond and beyond though where we get that warm sector to recover as we get towards the eighth and this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting so looking at those moisture returns and keeping in mind what we were looking at with that low level jet chart here the chance of severe weather does increase over time here due to this warm sector and the moisture return coming back into play here and that's going to be prevalent throughout the rest of this pattern here and we'll just have to watch and see how these troughs end out or end up trending because that's going to be the next key component the kinematics look like they're going to eventually come into place it's really going to be the thermodynamics the basically going to be the instability the dew points and the surface temperatures that are really going to play into the rest of that severe weather threat here so the best thing that we can do right now to try to verify some of this is by looking at our loop here for our precipitation type this is potentially what the radar could look like over the days ahead here and i'm going to actually just go ahead and let the loop play this time instead of manually operating it 
here's our storm system coming in for the sixth here storms fire early in the afternoon here's where we start to see those storms towards texas and then eventually towards south georgia and south carolina watch that roll out things calm down for a little bit and then we get new storms to pop off towards the middle of the month and to close out this time the 16 day time period as we get towards the back half of the month here some other things to make note of here is increasing snow over here towards wyoming the wildfire danger of course over towards west texas and new mexico here seeing a lot of high pressure over those areas there is chances for some rain down the line as we get towards the middle of the month so some relief is coming for these areas but as a whole here we're going to be focusing pretty heavily on severe weather over the course of the next couple of weeks here it is springtime so that's really to no one's surprise but that being said hope you found this video useful if you did you know what to do you need to smash that like button hit that subscribe button obliterate that share button as well make sure you have that notification bell on to be notified of every video whether it's an outlook of hurricane forecast severe weather forecast or even live stream coverage because we try to do it all here baby but that being said have a good rest of your friday and i'll see you soon it's been tired metalhead weatherman have a good day